to get us into a home or something like that. We qualified for a loan. We built a brand spanking new three-bedroom home in Fortuna on uh, Murray Court in Campton Heights, across from Toddy Thomas School. Uh, lived there, and, and it was a blessing from God. I had three children, Ryan, Josh, and Katie. And uh, our life was just perfect. We were going to church just loving God, man. And uh, I was just full of, full of the Spirit of God. I was almost too much. Well, I was too much, you know, puking Jesus all over everybody. I become obnoxious many times, but I was working at the sawmill and I ended up with a back injury, my neck, uh, an injury in my neck. Started taking Vicodin for pain, you know, old dope fiend that I was. Um, started uh, taking too many, knowing I was taking too many. Well, long story short, I ended up getting arrested for manufacturing methamphetamines in my garage of our brand new home. My kids were being neglected. Um, my wife went to jail, I went to jail, my kids went to child welfare in, in the system. Luckily my sister-in-law worked for uh, the welfare, she still does, a social worker, and they landed with her, so she ended up getting an apartment, taking my children. Um, I, my wife went through streams of living water program, Christian program, I went to prison. And uh, that was 14 months I spent behind bars, San Quentin, and then on down to L.A. to CRC, California Rehabilitation Center, which is a big, long name for prison. And, uh, and it was rough. It, I have to admit that it was really rough. Um, you know, I, I wanted to, uh, I was a convict, you know. I, so what I did was, I, I got, I'll show you. You've seen some, I think you've seen a picture of, of my, uh, uh, all my, my lovely artwork here that I, I, I had a, a blank canvas, a clean skin, and uh, so I got a bunch of tattoos so that when I got out, everybody would know that I'd been to prison, and uh, it was just pride, man, just pride. Um, I got out of prison and ended up, we lost our home, brand new three-bedroom home, gone, threw it away. Um, I went to Humble Recovery when I got out, did good for a long time. Um, started lifting weights, I got all buff, you know, and, and it's it just pride, man, I was just walking in pride, it wasn't long before I was back into drugs, I got my wife back into drugs, I committed a burglary, and uh, I went to jail, I bailed out of jail, and then I committed another burglary when I was on probation for a burglary, so I had a double whammy there, two burglaries, violation of probation, ended up, you know, back in jail, looking at six years penitentiary, and, um, I went to, uh, it was about 3.30 in the morning, and, and God was just, because I'd been lying when I was in there saying, you guys got the wrong guy, and I, I made this, fabricated this way cool story that they got the wrong person, that I'm innocent, you know, just a typical penitentiary, you know, I, I deny it all the way to the end, but you know what, God spoke to my heart one night, well, early, early in the morning, about 3 in the morning, and, uh, and he, just, he just whispered into my heart, Brian, the truth will set you free. And, uh, you know, I knew I was going back to prison, and they weren't coming off for six years. So what I did was I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't lie. Um, I had to come come clean. So I went to the correctional officer that was inside the dorm, and I just walked to him and said, I did it. He looked at me and said, you did what? And I said, I did the crime. I'm guilty. I committed the burglary. You have the right guy. And I turned around, and it was like, you know, a million pounds was taken off my back when... I did that. I felt so good after that, you know. Even though I knew I was going to prison, I just said, Lord, I'm, I'm yours. And I'm sorry for sinning against you, Lord. I repent. My life is yours. I know I'm going to prison, but God, I'm going to serve you wherever I go, no matter what I do. I'm going to give my life to you. And I'm yours. And, um, you know, it was about two weeks after that I went back to court. And when I walked into the courtroom, all shackled up in orange with handcuffs and all that, my lawyer walked up to me. And he had his, he was looking at this paperwork and he just shook his head. And he looked at me and he said, I, I can't explain this. And I said, what? He said, they're offering you probation. And I just fell apart right there. And the bailiff came walking over with a handful of Kleenex and uh, snot dripping from my nose. You've seen my snot. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was just, I was just, uh, I couldn't believe it. And um, it wasn't long before I was cut loose from jail, out on probation, and uh, by law they had to send me to prison, but I, you know, with the, God moved in the heart of the judge, he moved in the heart of the district attorney, Paul Gallegos, and um, I, uh, I just, 
It amazed me, and, and the funny thing is, is when I got out, they didn't require me to do any kind of drug treatment program, and uh, and I knew that was a setup. I knew right away, so I told my probation officer, I need a program. I want a Christian program. So I ended up at the Eureka Rescue Mission. I thought it was a program uptown in a house that was owned by the Eureka Rescue Mission, you know, with the carpet floors and stuff like that, but that wasn't the case. I ended up actually at the mission on 2nd Street. Uh, my first two weeks in the program, they actually put me in the dormitory upstairs with 30 other uh, people off the street, homeless people, and um, I didn't want to touch anything. I certainly wouldn't take my shoes off in the facility. No way I'm going to take my shoes off in the shower. I didn't want to touch anybody. You know, I just uh, I want to do my program. There was no program room beds open, so they had to put me in the dorm. Um, and a few days after being there in the dorm with those people, um, God touched my heart in a powerful way, and I just literally fell in love with those people. I found that there are just gold mines of stories and and just broken lives, man. Broken lives, like mine was. I had a broken life, but you know, I got restored. God, by the power of His Holy Ghost, restored my heart. He took out a heart of stone, and He put that heart of flesh back in me. He, he put the clean water on me and, and cleansed my heart. Uh, he, he purified my mind. I no longer thought like I used to think. I, I didn't have that criminal mindset anymore. And I got to go to the program downstairs in the chapel in the daytime. We had classes from 8.30 in the morning till 11.30 in the afternoon. In my first class, I can remember the chaplain at the time. I was sitting in there in my first class, and the chaplain stood up in front of the class there, and he opened up his Bible, and he started to preach and teach the Word of God. And I just started crying like a baby sitting there, because I was so grateful that I'd finally gotten a, a Christian program a year long. And God blessed me beyond measure beyond measure. I can't even express to you how much He has blessed me. But what I can do is I give you testimony of what God can do for you if you repent of your sins and give your heart to Jesus Christ. I'm not talking some religious churchianity Jesus. I'm talking the real deal, man. I'm talking real God, real life, a real changed life. And it means that you got to repent from your sins. That means if you've ever told a lie, you've broken God's holy law. And you need to be forgiven of that. You need to repent of that. If God were to judge you on Judgment Day and you were to stand before Him, what would you tell Him? What would you tell Him? If He judged you by His holy commandments, would you be guilty or innocent if you were a liar or a thief? You'd be guilty. And the wages of sin, the Bible says, is death. But the next verse says, the gift of God. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't serve enough people to gain it. You just receive it. Jesus Christ did all the work. He hung on that cross in your place and in my place. He paid the penalty for everything you ever did wrong, for everything I ever did wrong, and for the rest of the people in this world. But not everybody's going to receive Him or choose Him uh, and, and, and give their hearts to Him. He became a curse. And God poured His wrath out on Jesus, who never sinned. He was spotless, pure. He never did a thing wrong. And He showed us how to live. He could have just zipped up out of this world without going to the cross and say, hey, I did it. Now it's up to you guys. But he didn't do that. He took it all the way to the cross. But it didn't end there. He stayed dead for three days. But he was down in the bowels of the earth, the Bible says, setting the captives free. And then he rose again. I believe today with all my heart. I believe more in Jesus Christ alive today than I do in my own existence. And I got a birth certificate. I know I'm alive today. I know I was born. But I'll tell you what, there's something more real in this life is that Jesus Christ, because he took this hard stone, he took this rebellious uh, brat and turned me into a loving man. Today, I graduated the program. I worked at the thrift store for three or four months. I went back over to the mission and became a house manager. I went from house manager, and now I am the men's shelter director, and I'm the director of the New Life Discipleship Program. The program I went through, God has put me in a position to be a director of that program. I teach people there. I teach myself, and God teaches us all how to love one another. And that's what being in, a, in Christ is all about, is loving God with all of your heart and loving your neighbor as yourself. As simple as that. The, the best thing I can say is, is after you repent and ask God to come into your heart, you just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. And mean it. 
This is not a game. It's not a game at all, man. And read your Bible. Start in the Gospel of John. It'll tell you who Jesus really is. He's God in the flesh. That's who he really is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14 of that chapter 1 there in John says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God came down here onto this earth, left glory in the form of a man, and lived a life here perfect. Couldn't be any other way. I want to encourage you today. Um, keep watching my videos if you want. You know, I love it whenever you all respond to my videos. And uh, I love being an idiot. You know, I, I'm not usually like this in public. I can be out here in my own little world in this garage here. And I can just cut loose, you know, and, and just be as crazy as I want to be. And, um, and I really super much enjoy it. But I want to let you know that the joy that I have in my heart, the goofiness, the happiness, the, the little hop in my step and a smile on my face is all because of Jesus Christ. Today, I uh, live with my family today. Uh, Joshua, he works at the Pizza Co. He loves God. My daughter, Katie, she's, uh, uh, they're both graduated high school. They actually got their diplomas, unlike their dad. But um, they're, they're amazing kids. Uh, Brian Jr., right now, he's not doing so well. So if y'all... Uh, watch this. Pray for my son, Brian Jr. He's, he's, he's been, uh, anyway, he's just got some struggles in his life. He doesn't live here with us. But God has brought my family back together. When I tore apart, God brought it back together even stronger. I got some videos on my Facebook page. Feel free to browse through. There's a couple of videos there of Russia, a trip of Russia. I actually got to go to Russia with my pastor, Craig. Awesome man of God. And I had that time in my life. I got to meet a, oh, it's just a whole new world over there. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. Just, just to be real, I'm going to cut this short, though. Uh, the homeless people here in Eureka or in America would be considered rich in Russia. They would be considered rich. And it changed my life to go over there and visit Russia and visit the church. So all you got to do is mean it in your heart and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Receive Jesus. Just tell him, God, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And, and believe. And read your Bible and go to church. I don't go to church because I have to go to church. I go to church because I want to go to church. And some of the times, you know, I'll have to be honest. Pastor Craig, you're probably watching this. But uh, there's times, you know, my mind is drifting at times when uh, when the Word is being taught. I have to admit, there's times when I'm, I'm off in my own little world sometimes. I, I get the majority of the message, but sometimes I'm just, just, I'm just drifting. Some of the best times of me going to church is when everything's over and I get to stand up and talk with uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ inside the, inside the church there. Fellowship time. I go to um, Calvary Chapel Fortuna. On uh, Sunday nights at five o'clock, we have a potluck. Man, show up! You know, you know, you don't even have to be a Christian, really. You don't. You just come and, and and you don't even have to bring any food. Just come and enjoy the fellowship, enjoy the time. I'll be there. I'm there just about every Sunday night, and um, I, I, my family's there. It's just a really good time. A really good time. I really enjoy it, and I know you would too. Some of my old friends are there. You know, some of the old drug dealers that I used to get drugs from actually go to the church where I'm at. It's just a real laid-back, casual um, a church. It's really a cool church. So it's on 9th Street, just the two blocks up off of Main Street on your left, uh, Calvary Chapel, Fortuna. And uh, show up Sunday morning services. We have two at 9.30 and a 10.30 service, I think. You might want to check online if I might get those times wrong. But, um, yeah, I would just uh, I would just want to encourage you just to, to give your heart to the Lord. Repent of your sins and watch what the Lord can do. But... Uh, uh, anyway, this is probably one of the only real serious videos I'm going to ever put up on my Facebook page. And uh, I don't know, you know, I just I just love everybody out there, man. I really do. And, and God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. And if you just believe on him, you can have eternal life. So I'm going to cut this short. Love you guys. Um, I love hearing responses uh, from all, all of your... All of your uh, little comments that you make on my videos. And I've got some more coming up. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do next, but I, I guarantee you, I'm going to be an absolute idiot. But um, it's just got to come. I can't try to be funny. I can't try to be an idiot. I, I've just got to be one. So, anyway, Lord bless you, and may He keep you and, and make His face shine upon you and give you peace. Bye bye.